Today we're going to be working on slabs. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going to be talking about slabs or slab construction for ceramics. Now, again, most of us are still dealing with a virtual landscape and me, I'm just the same as you guys. Uh, now, with that said, we got to come up with another example to do certain ceramics things at home. If you don't have access to clay, what can you do? So today's project is going to be dealing with turning cardboard or to in my case, I use mat board into a slab architectural piece. And before we get class started today, I want to go ahead and check our homework, which is that you've liked, subscribed and shared all the various platforms so that we can continue to educate more people. Now, first things first, you always got to start out with a sketch. I did my sketch on just a simple piece of manila paper. I do encourage all of my students to work off of their Chromebooks. Use the Chromebook, use the app Google Canvas. A good tip that I do is I have my students submit their images in the chat for Zoom or for Teams or wherever you guys are doing if you Google Meet. All those places are good and it's just a nice record and also help to see what other students are working on. Now for this project, as, as always, when you're dealing with the sketch of the illustration, you do want to put down your notes into that image. So we have one finalized sculpture as what the final piece should look like. And then we're going to break those things down by generalized segments. So each segment that I'm having to create the illustration of, of what is the shape of this portion? If I'm dealing with just the lid, I need to have more of a trapezoid shape rather than a rectangular shape for the door or a square shape for some of the walls that we started building here. Now, starting off on the build process, you have to think about structural components. How are these things going to be joined together? Now, first and foremost, when we're building these objects, building these pieces together, we want to make sure that we're fusing the walls properly. Now, as we're doing slab construction, I've got another video. You guys can check it out up here. When we're dealing with slab construction, you're taking two pieces of clay, putting them together, two pieces of clay together like so. We need to go and put something in between those two pieces of clay to act as a barrier to grab those pieces of clay and really hold on to them. Now, if we were doing this in clay, I would have two slab pieces of clay, rolling a coil in the middle and then smoothing out the coil into the wall section. Because we don't have clay, we're going to go to the next best thing. We're going to use glue and some tape. These aren't exactly coil pieces and they're not going in the same way. I know that. However, to meet the need of the standards that we're trying to teach, this still c comes together in a pinch. So I'm putting down a thin layer of glue, topping that with a piece of tape, and then just continuing the process on around. As I'm building up these different pieces together, I want to ensure that all these pieces are being stable. Uh, these pieces are being held together properly and there's stability in the structure. Now, building up the base portion there, the base has to hold its weight to ensure that it doesn't sag or cave during the process. So for this, when we do, what I did was I created a grid pattern along one piece of board. Now, using that grid as the, as the subject of what goes where, I took another couple pieces that had some thin mat board, just cut this and along to uh, create like a little angle and did four angle pieces to work as interior struts of the uh, of the piece inside topping that off with a top and bottom layer for the mat board now i have a floor and a base even though there's a little bit of a crawl space in between there that will help give me more structure as i'm putting weight onto the top portions next we're building up the walls now as we're building the walls in i want to make sure that the walls are lined up properly with the base as well as the roof that i'm about to put on there as well to do this i'm going to take an extra piece of tape angle it across the side of the wall section put glue on there and on the corners of the pieces and just set a piece of board on it. What I've done now is I've created marks without having to draw anything of where that glue is going to match up with the lid piece. Again, adding more glue, adding more tape, and just putting those pieces together is going to give me a solid foundation as these pieces are connecting together. Now notice how I'm putting a ton of tape down on these rafter pieces, these strut pieces, to put these pieces together and I'm putting together the top and bottom portion of the flooring. I want to make sure that I'm getting enough contact portions of where the glue is touching those pieces of mat board so everything can fuse together properly. I'm using the weight of the structure to glue those pieces together so they're putting enough contact around the portions.
Okay guys, so we're gonna pause here on the structure build today because I'm gonna come back with another video next week going over the detailing of the exterior designs. So we're gonna take this mat board, which is a paper product, and we're gonna add color and spray paint to it to finish off the final final bits of the design. Class, so I hope that you guys got something wonderful out of this as I always do for all the classes. So let's go ahead and take care of the homework, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms, get the message out there to as many teachers and students as possibly can. Want to educate the masses, it's always the goal. And don't forget if you guys have a question, comment, or concern, raise those hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. I, I have questions all the time myself, so ask away. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.